My name is Laura Entravia, and this is Between the Lines. The day my friend Jeff lent me Paper Mario was the day my life would change forever. Not only did I completely fall in love with this game and didn't return it to him for like three years, I also fell in love with the game's music. It had that undeniably happy, upbeat, energetic Mario flavor, while still being a very unique sound world compared to the other Mario games. The music from this game was composed by Yuka Tsujiyoko, and I really appreciate her whimsical, sometimes florid compositional style throughout the game. On the last episode, we talked about polyrhythms in Super Mario Galaxy. A polyrhythm is the use of two or more conflicting rhythms simultaneously. Today, I want to talk about a particular type of polyrhythm that we experience frequently in all types of music, from pop to classical to Broadway to, of course, video game music. Now, to identify the polyrhythms in the Freeze Flame Galaxy piece from last episode, we had a quick lesson in different types of meter, or ways that we divide music into patterns of beats. We talked about the idea of duple versus triple and simple versus compound. And again, it's not something that you have to look at on paper to identify, it's something that you feel. To review, duple or triple meter refers to the number of beats per measure. Duple being multiples of two, and triple being multiples of three. And simple and compound meters refer to the way those beats divide into smaller beats. Simple being dividing into multiples of two, and compound dividing into three. Let's look at an example from Banjo-Tooie for a second. The music from the Witchy World level. We're actually going to do this backwards for a second. Here is the world's music reimagined for a boss fight within the level, with a giant inflatable dinosaur named Mr. Patch. This piece is hilarious and awesome, and I sincerely hope it is performed live someday. And also, we have large groups of four dividing into small groups of two and four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then when you divide it, one and two and three and four and one and two. And so you have a division of two. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So we would call this quadruple, four beats per measure, simple, dividing into two, meter. Quadruple simple. Now let's look at the original world music. It's obviously slower now, but it also has a different feel to it. This feels like two groups of large beats dividing into groups of three. One, two, one, two, one, two. And if we divide, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So each of those divisions is one, two, three, one, two, three. So this would be duple, two beats, compound, dividing into three meter. Duple compound. One more example, and we're gonna jump games now to Final Fantasy X and look at two Xanarkand. And this one I'm feeling as a triple simple meter. Measures of three dividing into groups of two. One, two, three, one, two, three, 
1 and 2 and 3 and... Why am I going through all of this again? <laughs> the reason is that sometimes there's more than one way to feel a meter. That is to say, let's say we have three beats per measure. We can divide those three beats into a total of six smaller beats or divisions. But mathematically, we can divide six more than one way, right? We can make it two groups of three or three groups of two. There's a difference between one, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. The grouping is changing and it's making the larger beats feel like they are different lengths. And the most famous example of what I'm talking about is probably America from the musical West Side Story by Leonard Bernstein. Check out the melody line. If I count the divisions, you can hear the accented beats are changing. One, two, three, four, five, six, 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 one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. This relationship of three versus two is called a hemiola. It comes from the Greek term hemiolios, which literally means containing one and a half. Wikipedia defines a hemiola as a musical figure in which, typically, two groups of three beats are replaced by three groups of two beats, giving the effect of a shift between triple and duple meter. It's a super cool effect, and I absolutely adore the way Tsujiyoko uses it in the final battle of Paper Mario. This piece is called Bowser's Rage, and it's one of my favorite battle pieces of all time because it's super intense, it's packed with awesome compositional ideas, and it's actually going to cycle through almost every single one of those types of meters we talked about earlier in the episode. We start in quadruple simple. Four beats per measure, beats are dividing into two. Then we move to triple simple, three beats per measure, beats are still dividing into two. I really love the effect of moving from the quadruple to triple meter, which is effectively dropping one beat per measure. It feels like the music has suddenly picked up pace and is driving us even more forward. Next is the first moment of the hemiola. It's just a brief hint, but it's there. We just shifted from triple simple into duple compound meter. We started with three groups of two, and then we switched into two groups of three. The same amount of time was taken, but the length of the larger beats feels different. For this next section, I'm going to count the groupings without stopping, and pay attention to the moment of the hemiola again, and how Tsujiyoko will extend it for this last part of the piece. One, two, three, one, two, three. One and two and three and one and two and three and one, two, three, two, two, three, one, two, three, two, two, three, one, two, three, two, two, three, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then we're back into the quadruple. That's a lot to take in at once, and if you got confused, I encourage you to listen again and tap the beat as you go, as you naturally feel it. It's easier to feel the shifts in meter than to describe them. So what does this all mean in terms of the game and the emotion that we as players should be feeling? Because a hemiola is a really cool mathematical concept, but we are talking about music here. So what did the use of the hemiola achieve on a musical level? What's the point? For me, in the moment where the hemiola occurs, we're feeling that the beat is becoming longer. There are larger beats. So it's not driving forward as much, but the activity of the divisions within the beat has increased, and you can really hear it in the drums particularly. The hi-hat, especially, starts going crazy when we start hitting the compound meter section. So there's this simultaneous feeling of the music not relaxing, but becoming more expansive or drawn out, but also becoming frenetic at the same time, because there's just so much going on in these larger beats. 
a moment ago, the music was driving us forward, and all of a sudden we have this feeling of it just opening up, so we can take more time to enjoy these intense harmonies in this section, which incidentally, are based off of the harmonies from the beginning of the piece, that we associate as being Bowser's theme. sense that the composer wanted to create a sensation of longer beats for these harmonies to really come out, for us as an audience to recognize it almost as the chorus of a pop song. We just had all of this build and development and crazy energy, but when these chords arrive, these recognizable chords that we've heard before, it's like we arrived somewhere. And I just love the use of the hemiola to naturally create a longer musical phrase for us to enjoy that moment. Because how freaking epic does Bowser's theme sound right now? And how lame would it have been if the music did something like this instead? This is a terrible MIDI mock-up of what would happen if the hemiola did not occur and the meter was unchanged. We continue with that feeling of three beats per measure, and it's so lame. It's so lame. The moment in the music is so much more effective with the hemiola. <laughs> I never get tired of this moment. It absolutely perfectly enhances the excitement of the battle, which, by the way, if you're not familiar with this game, it's a turn-based RPG. So the fact that the music could generate this level of excitement in me when I have all the time in the world to decide if I want to use taunt or attack or send my paracoop in, it says a lot about the effect of the composition. I applaud Sujioko for her flawless understanding of how effective the Hemiola can be, and I hope to see more examples of this in video game music in the future.